Hello everyone, today's video is part 3 of a video series about the Step IR Urban Beam. But before we continue with the full review of this antenna, please subscribe if you want to support this channel. Also, remember to click on the bell just like this to make sure to be notified when a new video is online. If you ask any DXer what is the best antenna you can get to do DX, they probably will answer a motor bander beam on each band. But this requires a large land, a large piece of land, and an antenna farm. But if you live in a suburb just like me, and you want to commute every day downtown to go to work, and you know, maybe this is not possible for you just like me, because in order to do that, I need a large land. Either it's gonna to be too expensive or too far away to commute downtown. But there is another option. You can get a step IR antenna. A step IR antenna, they have been around since 2001 and they had improved over time. This antenna is actually a technology using stepper motor with copper tape. And what it does, it actually extract or retract the tape to match the frequency that you want to operate on. So you always get a perfect match. Imagine you have a dipole and every time you want to transmit, you go outside and trim perfectly your, SW, your, perfectly your SWR by cutting the edge. Well, just imagine this is exactly what the step IR antenna does. It actually matches every operating frequency, not every band, every operating frequency within the spec and the band that it can be operated on. So the Urban Beam is a compact step IR made for urban area. It is small. It's a two element Yagi on from six to 20 meter. And it is a rotating dipole, folded dipole on 30 and 40 meter. What happened is on 30 and 40 meter, it actually goes through the suite and go on the other side of the antenna while the director is completely retracted into the motor. So that's why you can operate on 30 and 40 meter in a folded dipole from six to 20 meter, the director is actually adjusting itself with the, ele the driven element to make a two element Yagi. So this is how this antenna works. So it covers from six to 40 meter. Imagine this is way high up my tower and in my small lot, which is 6,500 square feet, well, I cannot put as much antenna as I would do if I had an antenna farm. So I've been looking for an antenna for years that can do that, can actually optimize my highest spot on my lot, which is on my tower, actually will not look too bad for the neighbors, and that will cover all band with no SWR. Also, I'm operating at 1000 watt right now, but I used to have a hemp that was 1300 watts, so I wanted to operate at full legal limits, and most multiband Yagis actually are not able to go over a thousand watt or 1200 watts. But the step IR can go up to three kilowatts. So there's no issue with this antenna with power. And what it does is actually working on every band. There's eight band on one antenna. And in my small lot, okay, I had some wire antenna for uh, 12, 17, and 30 meter and 40 meter and this wire antenna were actually uh, not very high because my tower was used by my two element yagi that i had which was 10 15 and 20 meters this yagi served me very well but it's only three bands and that's it so and my tower's limitation in square feet it's six square feet so if you have an a decent two element yagi that is fully go limit of power that it can take it actually with this is about four square feet so that's the, the same thing with the step IR urban beam and since I have only six square feet then I was limited what I can put in the tower so all those limitation led me to step IR product but you know I would have loved to have a four element but I went to to the urban beam because its name says it all it's a urban beam it's not bigger than my former two element Yagi. It's about the same wind load. It fits in my towers and it covers a band, no SWR. And it also 
makes let, let me operate on all those band using my amplifier so this is very 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 good but this antenna is actually very complex so you need to pay very good attention to the assembly because you want years of re reliability while it's up at your tower so it took me about 20 hours to build the antenna. I did about 95% into my garage, which is 16 by 28 feet. And this antenna, uh, if you take your time, it looks complex because when you open it and you see all the parts, it's very, very well packed. You wonder, hey, my God. But when you start building it, it's like building a Lego toy, okay? And you start building it and do all what the recommendation are in the manual, they'd say, Read the manual twice before the antenna arrive. Then I, I strongly suggest you read the manual with the parts beside you because it helps you understand exactly what you have to do. And then you find the parts so you understand before you start. And it's very important because you want years of reliability because there is some active part that you're going to install uh, up in the air. My kit also had a lot of options that I'm going to show you. But those options are actually, uh, I think they're, they are a must, okay? If you want to have the connector box up there, it's easier to have all the connection with the connectors. It fits perfectly. Also, I upgraded to the SDA2000 controller, which this controller is absolutely, it looks very good, but it's very fun to work with and it opens up a lot of possibilities for the future. This controller is compatible with all the step IR antenna, so, Take a look and you can upgrade it to it. Uh, the other controller that comes with the antenna by default is the SDA100. This is the SDA2000. Okay, so we'll go through a little bit later on. But this antenna is great. And I was on 40 meter at some point and I made some VKs with plus 10 over 9 on 40 meter. That was incredible because it never happens to me before. And when I was using on 40 meter, I had one of my friends, which is local, it's a VA2 and IJ. And I had a friend station where we have a QSO. And actually, I still had my 40 meter dipole antenna in inverted V, which is about two feet, two feet lower from the beam, okay, into the tower. And the ends going, you know, to, to the ground like this. So it's not high, very high. And uh, I made a comparison between the two, local and on a DX. I will show you very quickly. Uh, take a look and you will see the difference between the two. It's incredible. I cut out the the, <laughs> the old uh, dipole and only left with the 40 meter. So just imagine the difference in performance is very, very, very good. Okay, so there's no need to keep another wire. So another wire is less in my backyard. I only have 80 meters left. I want to do 160 meter in the future. We'll see. I'm just thinking about what I'm going to do. But now I cover from 6 to uh, 80 meter on HF and VHF 6 meter. But uh, with uh, only two antenna, which is great. Looks fine in my backyard. So check out the difference between the dipole on a local and a DX station on 40 meter. Check that out. J'ai contacté, euh, contacté euh, d'autres cousins sur 80 mètres les deux nuits. Euh. Non, on va écouter effectivement euh, 5 plus bas, 7135, mais... Last weekend, there was a contest. There was actually a lot of interference coming from Europe when I beam straight east. And there was a station, a VE4 station, that is on exactly on the west. So what I did is I didn't hear it very much, but when I turn on the other side, well, you can see that I attenuate the interference from Europe and the signal has become way louder. So it makes a huge difference. Performance was very, very good into the front to back. Check it out. Um, if you're on the East Coast, you're probably fine, but it could be four, but there's a line on the map, so um, you want me to put you down as a, as a five? 
Yeah, it's on a, it's a CQ, CQ zone map. You can find it, and uh, there's a line that just goes right through along along the eastern seaboard. So if you uh, if you want to change it, just let me know. Thank you. Thank you for working in the contest. Victor Echo for Japan. Bravo, bravo. I remember on a Saturday about a month ago, uh, I had a, a QSO on 20 meters with a station from Georgia. It was actually the only station I could see on the spectrum scope that day because the condition was very bad. Uh, the station was very, very strong as a, an antenna farm and a, a very, very good setup. And at the end of the QSO, uh, I had a, a station calling me, but it was so weak. I wasn't sure if it, if it was my imagination, okay, and that the station was actually uh, there, you know, and I wasn't sure. So I just said, keep on transmitting. I'll turn the beam around and try to, you know, to, to beam directly in your direction. That's what I did. And I, at some point, I really heard a call sign. And I went onto QRZ.com and got the bearing and went straight to him. And I did adjust the uh, beam uh, uh, the beam width, okay? And I did adjust the beam width so uh, I could actually get more gain. And you know what? His signal went from nothing to about S7 and we had a QSO. I think we, we, we talked for 45 minutes or an hour or so. And it was very, very usable. So. I was really impressed with this. Without knowing much what to do with the width of the beam, with the controller, I was able to get that station out. And this station was actually closer to me than the Georgia station. So, and propagation was not there, but I was able to have a QSO. So that was really amazing. Now, that's where you see uh, uh, an antenna a performance like this, what you can do, and, and, and it covers all bands. So it's all bands from 6 to 40. So it's very, very great. It does exactly what I wanted. I really love it. And it's very special. So let's go to the controller very quickly. And then we'll come back to a conclusion. This is the SDA 2000 controller. So let's start the demo. So we push on power to turn it on. It'll take a few moments to boot up. You have a very nice colored display. Into the display, you will have your front to back and your forward gain display here, the beam width here, and you will also have the status of the element. Now the elements are completely retracted into the motor. Okay, this is the safest position. Let's say you have an ice storm. Well, the fiberglass pole can be bent a little and it won't damage the element, but you can leave the element extended if you would like, okay? I prefer to retract it when I'm done and uh, uh, shut down the shack, okay? So let's push on 20 meter to select the band. You just need to push the band here. If you want to go to 30 and 40 meter, you just extend here. If you want to go back to six, you go like this. Okay, so that's pretty easy. While it is flashing like this and flashing over here from green to amber, that's mean that it is actually moving. So the antenna is moving. So it is better. Well, the antenna, the element inside the fiberglass tube are moving. So it is better not to transmit when it, when you, it's actually moving. You can hear, I just heard the click there. That's mean, and it stopped flashing. That's mean I'm adjusted to 14 to 40. If you want to adjust the frequency manually, okay. And fine tune, you just tune like this using this knob. If you want to change the step of the frequency, you push air. So you have from five to hundred kilohertz. Okay. So you see that's changes the step There you got five. Okay. So that's is very easy. And that's about it to change the band. But if you want to have it synchronized with your rig, that's mean using the RS2 dither two cable and you want to have it follow your change of frequency with your rig, you can actually use the auto tracking. Okay. And it will actually track your radio frequency and change as you go. But I prefer to do it manually. It's, you know, it's very simple uh, to use. If you go here, you have the setup and in the setup, you can go into the menu where you have a lot of options. Okay. You have, of course, 
the antenna selection, you can go through menu with the knob here. You can select the menu item using this or this. If you press select or you just push on that button and you see that I have an urban beam that is configured into the controller. So we can exit the menu and you can calibrate, you can test the motor, you can actually add new pattern to your antenna using the micro SD card and some software. So you can do a lot of things with this thing, okay? And you can set up your radio for the auto tracking, you know, you do that into the menu. Here, what you have is the operating button. Now I'm in normal. That's mean my beam is pointing from the director, which is a passive element and the driven element is actually the reflector, if you'd like. So for the two element Yagi, and you can see my front to back is 16 dB front to back. I have 10.4 dB forward gain, and this is the bandwidth of the beam, which I can adjust, okay, to get the max gain using this knob here. On certain band, you have more adjustment, okay? And I can just change it like this, which is pretty cool. So me, sometimes it's giving you the extra gain, the extra, uh, to be able to hear a very, um, a very uh, weak signal. So let's put to normal, which is 66, like this. Let's say you are beaming Europe and then you hear a station from west, like me here. If I'm beaming Europe, I'm east, and then I want to go to west very quickly because I, I just heard a station. I can push 180 degrees. 180 degrees, it actually readjusts the elements, so the, dri the driven element becomes the director, and the reflector is the passive element, which is usually the director. You don't have as much option from there, okay, and you lose a little bit of gain, but it's very quickly because it's only readjust the difference in length, and it's not like changing band or turning the beam, so that is very quick, and all step IR antenna can do this. You also have here a bi-directional button. Let's say you're in the middle of a QSO and there's someone east, someone west, and you want to hear both. Well, you can actually use this button to receive a, a more omnidirectional pattern okay, uh, of the, on the band and on the station that will uh, help you to uh, work all the station between that band. Then you can go back to normal. When you're done, you can retract the element like this, okay? It takes about the same time as you did for extracting them, okay? So when it's done, then you shut down the controller. So that is very, very easy. Once again, you can see here it's flashing. You won't see the band flashing. It will show you it's re retracting. And then you have the flashing air from green to amber to show you that the element are actually moving in the fiberglass tube. When it's done, you hear the click, elements on, and you power down the controller. When we installed the antenna, my wife was not there. She was actually out. And when she came back later on, the antenna was installed. And you know what my wife said? She said something I never thought I would have heard in my entire life. She says, wow, what a beautiful antenna. Looks like a butterfly. Just imagine. My wife saying that, I says, oh. <laughs> so this antenna called the Urban Beam does a very fine job. It looks great. It covers all band, very good performance. What can you ask more? Now, the only way I can improve my station is by moving out. And that won't happen since now I have my Urban Beam. Hope you enjoyed this video. 73, catch you some other time.